Community Theater in Middletown, and this is the interviewer, Ed Strother, and at the present time, I'm talking with Brian Lau. I better spell that for you. L-O-U-G-H, Brian Lau. The date is uh, July 17th, 1985, and the time this afternoon is about, uh, well, it's coming up 5.15. I've invited Brian over for supper, and while we enjoy a little cocktail before dinner, uh, we're going to talk. Brian, uh, how did you come into this present job of theater manager, anyway? I started my enjoyment of theater in high school and knew that I wasn't talented enough to perform professionally. But I always wanted to be involved in theater and the performing arts. So upon entering college, I decided that I'd get a business background and then try to associate myself with other arts organizations. And so I was successful at that in uh, the University Singers, Ball State Theater, Ball State Studio Theater, and then organized several other events, including producing an original full-length musical in Emmons Auditorium at Ball State. I didn't know that. What was that musical? It was called The Wild Wild Midwest. <laughs> it was a homecoming show, yeah. and it, uh, I, after my association with several other talented people with the singers and so forth, I um, gathered them all together and said, let's do a show. I, I wrote the synopsis of the show, um, got some good musicians involved, and, and we got a script together, and we produced it in Emmons. It was uh, about two hours long, and it was a show within the show. It was very typical of the Andy, I mean the uh, Judy Garland uh, shows. Do you remember what year it was? Mm, yeah, I imagine it was in ni eight, 1981. All right. And... Somebody saw your work and said, hey, why don't you join us? No, no, that's not true. Um, I did get, though, um, a written letter from uh, documentation from the president of the university, which at that time I think was Anderson, yes. and uh, the activities director, James Marine, uh, stating that it was the best show that has ever been produced for a homecoming uh, production. Okay. And so I was very pleased with that. But no, I began volunteering as a set construction. Uh, at Civic? At Civic. And... Performed in five shows, in five, five of the, four of the five shows in one season. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. What were your biggest? My uh, biggest uh, role? Is that what you want to know? Yeah. You had six lines? Or no, no, no. I had, I played, um, oh, what was his name? Benny South Street in Guys and Dolls, along with um, Rich Reasoner and Patty Higgins and Jan Etchison. All right. And uh, then I was in Dulce in HMS Pinafore, assistant directed Little Mary Sunshine, and then uh, decided that if I wasn't going to, I still had this ambition of being involved at a higher level of our artistic organization. Um, the time was right for me to either do something then or, or move on. And uh, so when they auditioned for Finian Rain Finian's Rainbow the next year, I didn't audition, but was offered by the person who did get the lead in yeah. Finian's Rainbow to play the part for money. Oh. He said, I cannot play this part. I will pay you $200 to play this part. And you could have turned pro. <laughs> <laughs> I was frightened to death and said no. I said that I didn't want to go back to Civic in the same position that I was then. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling that the curtain, that present managing director was going to quit. And she did. All right. And when she did, I went to Jeff Carter, who was then, I think, vice president, and said, I would like to apply for the job. Mm-hmm. I, he pulled an executive committee meeting together. Um, I presented my case, including the fact that I was still a Ball State student and eligible for work study. Muncie Civic Theater didn't know it, but they were eligible to hire me at 20% of the, my salary and said, you can't turn me down, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got the job on, uh, during, uh, on work study, which is a uh, support system through the Ball State University. Yeah. And... Um, well, who arranged that? There had to be somebody at the college who did that. I called you. Claire McCormick okay. over at the college and said, Claire, I think Muncie Civic is eligible. I would like to create a job there. Um, how do I go about doing that? And so she sent me all the paperwork, and I presented that at the executive meeting. Right. So it was so attractive, they really couldn't turn it down. They really couldn't. And Have you regretted any of that? No. No, you've been on the job three years. Mm -hmm. right? 
or will have been on the job three we'll years? We'll have been on the job three years in four months. All right. And you haven't regretted it? No. Do you regret uh, anything about it? Now, don't pause too long. <laughs> no, I really don't. I really don't regret any of the moves that I have made as a profession in this field. All right. If there are no regrets, then there, has to, there have to be some rewards. Now, uh, give me a reward. Or My two. biggest reward is that I get to work and make money one, uh, while I am enjoying my hobby, and two, alongside others that are enjoying their favorite hobby. Yeah. And I think you can you can appreciate that as sure, well. Sure, I can. Sure. And I think those are my two greatest rewards. Well, look over those three years now. I'm thinking in terms of rewards and how to achieve them, that sort of thing. Uh, what has been the greatest thing that you feel you have accomplished in the last three years? Tough question. Yeah, I, I think I, I think um, the biggest thing that uh, is an overall feeling and growth that this that Civic has experienced in the past three years, um, and it's not one particular item; it's a lot of different items involving a lot of different people. But the uh, the growth of membership body, the growth of volunteer participation, the growth and and what we're doing presently with the capital fund drive, right. and uh, in restoring and preserving and ensuring the health of the organization for the next 20 years. I want to get into that capital fund drive a little more in detail, but uh, before you go too far, I also want to tell you, and anybody else who may be listening, that you do have many admirers. That there are a number of people on the board, and I have to say number rather than everybody because I haven't talked with everybody about it, but a number of people on the board who have expressed a great deal of admiration for your work I would have said over the last three years, the greatest sense of accomplishment really should have been the sense of stability you have given to the organization of civic theater. In other words, we know that somebody is going to be there. We know that somebody is seated there in the office. Somebody is going to answer the telephone. And uh, that helps to provide a great deal of, uh, of stability. Well, and, appreciate it. Uh, and, well, you have... Many people who have worked with you and many people who have said, yes, really great. Now, this capital fund drive, who is, uh, uh, tell us under whose auspices, under whose direction this uh, really got started. It really got started is different than what it is now. Um, it began, um, I suppose, with Jeff Carter and myself um, sitting down and talking about the development and, and trying to restore the building. Uh, Bill Bartolini, who was a managing director, uh, the first managing director that Muncie Civic Theater ever had, uh, also was interested in uh, the restoration and did begin some initial paperwork, but it fell through. Mm -hmm. We picked it back up and invited Bill Peterson, who at that time was very, very frustrated with working on the board of Civic because he felt nothing was happening. With who, the tell us who Bill Peterson is. Bill Peterson is the senior vice president and chief financial officer a ball corporation. Okay. And he is now serving as general chairman of the capital fund campaign. Yeah. And now he is the one who got you back on track. Yes. That? And right. he, he directed us toward um, what we needed to do first, second, third. Uh, he accepted the responsibility from the very beginning to be general chairman and gave us the, the structure to build upon. Well, he's, he's done a nice job from my point of view. He's he certainly worked has. very hard. Yes, he's building now, where do we go from there? Who else uh, do we have to... We have Bill Barnes, who is general chairman. All right. And then uh, Jack Reichert, who is a wonderful person, uh, yes. a strong supporter yes. of Civic Theater from years and years, played Henry Higgins twice yes. in My Fair Lady. Matter of fact, one Well, time, I directed him the first time. Well, the second time, he was called back from Arizona. He was in Arizona. Bill Spurgeon, the, the, yes. uh, our board member, was uh, on casting and said... Jack, we're doing My Fair Lady again, and we have to have you to play Higgins. And he was in Arizona and came back and played Henry Higgins. <laughs> and he was also the only... The, we've had three major fund drives in the history of Civic. The first one was run by John Emmons, who ran the fund drive for the Emmons Auditorium. He ran a fund drive to pay off the mortgage for the building. And that was successful. Yes, that was successful. Then Jack Reichert um, ran another fund drive, a smaller one, when we, when Jack Emmons was successful and they burnt the mortgage on the building, the next day, in 1975, the marquee fell down. 
So you burnt the mortgage one day, and the marquee falls down the next day. <laughs> and so Jack Reichert headed up that campaign to uh, put the new marquee up. Mm-hmm. And he would not accept anything under a $500 gift. And so when people, when he went to Bill Barnes and said, Bill, I'd like you to give to the, cap, to the marquee drive, Bill said, okay, here's 50 bucks. And Jack said, no, I'm not taking anything less than 500 And so he <laughs> turned it down. And then Bill Peterson is doing this. Well, Jack Bill is, Barnes come through, right? No, Bill never did. <laughs> he said, forget it then. He no. did not pay. Okay. But then Jack is, was in charge of recruiting this wonderful personnel that we have on the committee now. We have some of the top leaders in the community leading us, and um, Jack was responsible for recruiting those people. That's good. Well, he could do it. Mm-hmm. He walks into a community with a really big smile and, mm-hmm. a, and a nice slap on the back and a great deal of cordiality. It's kind of hard to say no to Jack. Or when he says everything is great, it's kind of hard to say no, it isn't. Mm -hmm. You just can't do it. He reminds me a lot of you. Oh, well, (laughs) I couldn't go that far. Uh, Well, tell us now, uh, do we have, uh, well, I know we do. Just tell us who the the fundraisers are, the uh, organization. Uh, Marcia Springs. Marcia Springs is our consultant. All right. And we are paying her a right. fee okay. to come up every month. And is it her firm? Her firm is Stephen Luther and Company. All right. Okay. And he is the. Is that in Indianapolis? Yes, he is the state, the director of the state house for the Republican Party, and he raises oh. the money for the Republican Party in the state. And she is his assistant, and she travels up here and consults us on what is the best way means to raise our money, our money. Has she earned her income, you yes. think? Yes, I have You're no pleased. doubt. Yes, I am very pleased. Um, it's not that we couldn't come up with the answers, but we avoid all the mistakes because yeah. she's been there before and we haven't. Yeah. Well, I think I would agree. Uh, I have enjoyed those luncheons over at Ball Corporation uh, Wednesday, or, yeah, Wednesday at 11.30. have enjoyed the report meetings. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting Marcia Springs' name, though. That's horrible of me, but uh, that's part of my nature. Also on the committee, if you wanted a, a solicitation committee, the chairman are Bill, Bob Bell, who is a former yeah. university president. He's in charge of uh, soliciting major individuals. Marty Schwartz, who is president of the Schwartz Paper Company and on the board of directors, is in charge of major gifts or special gifts, and that's mm-hmm. the $3,000 and above gifts. And Jan Etchison, who has taken on 63 names to call, is also doing his own. He's, he wants to be responsible for raising $100,000 on his own. And presently, he's at $20,000. Yeah, that sounds like the or Jan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Bob Holt is in charge of corporations, and their, their division is responsible for $97,000 to date. Mm-hmm. So he's doing very well. And then there's Earl Williams and J.B. Black, who are doing the general gifts, the smaller, the $100 and under gifts. Well, I know uh, Jan seems always, Jan Atchison, seems always to uh, be willing to help out with theater. He's done uh, several things for Muncie Civic, hasn't he? Oh, he certainly has. Besides, I don't mean on stage. Yeah, besides yeah. being on stage, um, he owns sound control security systems and alternate telephone systems, and he has donated the entire security and fire system this year, or last year we received it, and we paid for installation. He donated all the equipment and the monitoring. He also donated the entire phone system, entire intercom system, um, and has, over the past years, donated personal items or anything, really, that he has that he can give a theater. He will. Yes. And uh, it's been a tremendous support. Well, it, it has helped him through a lot of personal problems as well. Right now, he uh, is uh, creating, recreating the character of Tevya uh, for our summer theater at the college. And uh, how he manages those lines and the songs and the dances and what have you. And calls how many people? 63. And he yeah. calls 63 people. If he really gets that job done all before the summer is over mm-hmm. without killing himself, he'll be something of a miracle man. Let's go into something else. I, I know, I always feel it's a chancy game to play to uh, ask for nominations for people who have 
really helped you out, and I mean personally, you and your work. But despite the chancy game that it is, what, what people do you single out as helping you in your work the most? The most, um, <clears throat> Bill Peterson would have to be one. All right. Because um, the capital fund, right? Jeff Carter would have to be another. Right. I'm working closely with him over the past two years. Nancy Carlson, who has always been a strong leader, has helped me out tremendously, as has Walt Baker. Mm -hmm. um, Walt is one where I can call and say, Walt, I need this, and he will say, okay. And uh, he has always been there. Darling Pizzullo, um, which, which we had an unfortunate incident with, but she has always been there. Why, why is that unfortunate? Well, she um, resigned from the board recently. Uh, the reason is that we had an awards banquet, and we failed to acknowledge some of the... That's the trouble, you know. Every time you give an award to somebody, mm -hmm. you make an enemy. Mm -hmm. you know? And we did. And uh, she was the chairman of the Young Actors Workshop, and we failed to recognize that. Yeah. And uh, so she was very upset and uh, resigned from the board because of it. Do you think you will get her back? Or? No, I don't. She's a strong-willed person. She's made her mind up, and she will stick with her decision. Well, she is a good worker, mm -hmm. and a beautiful woman. And a beautiful and, woman. Uh, and it's a shame that she won't be president in the uh, present in the uh, board meetings. I may resign myself as a result. <laughs> <of it. laughs> no, but those are, those are just a few. Um, some of the corporations, where I get strong, strong support from Ball Corporation, and I, um, all their all our printing. We we save probably ten thousand dollars a year by the services and in kind donations that Ball Corporation provides annually, yes. and uh, including all our stationery, our envelopes, our photocopying. I wasn't aware of that. Oh, all, all of it. Um, Two-color printing. As a matter of fact, when we hosted the Indiana Community Theater League Festival last March, they printed the entire program for us, provided pads and pencils for everyone uh, as a public relations item, but also to support us. Yes. And their willingness to give, if I have trouble taking advantage of it, because all I have to do is pick up the phone, because I know who to call in any area, and say, I would like this, and they will get it for me. Yeah. Let's talk about that uh, Indiana Community Theater Festival. It, it's really referred to as an excerpt festival. Each excerpt from each representative theater does a, a one-hour performance. Is that it? Yeah, I think it was 50 minutes. 50 sure. minutes. Uh, tell us your role in that. Uh, I was um, the local, I think my official title was local arrangements chairman. Okay. And Ross Rowland, who was president of Indiana Community Theater League at the time, this and is the uh, attorney in town? Yes, the attorney in town, Mr. L. Ross Rowland, right. um, the fab fabulous party host, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, was president, and it was on our board of directors, and I worked closely with him in arranging things. What we did differently this year, though, was we took advantage of the commercial aspect right. of the festival where nobody else has before, and we received about $4,500 worth of services from the, in the um, Muncie Tourism Bureau. Uh, which was newly founded, and took advantage of that, took advantage of a lot of different things, including computer services from the users group here in town. Um, we, for the first time, printed a full-fledged program selling advertisement to state merchandisers mm -hmm. uh, to pay for things. We went, the festival, a year before we hosted it, made, I think, $50. We made $1,500 when we did the festival here. Mm -hmm. Uh, had 15 community theaters involved, um, had a two-day, full-day festival, um, nice banquet afterwards, um, nice awards, really did up the publicity on the whole thing, full pages in both papers for pre-announcement of the festival. And yeah. so we really used it as a PR event for ourselves to look to expose us to the community as well as support and help grow, yes. help the growth of the state organization. When you talk about a fifteen hundred dollar uh, profit, mm -hmm. uh, does that go to Civic? No, that all goes to the state organization. I see. And what do they do with it? They their charter is to promote community theater around the state. It's basically simple as that. So is it there for grants or for travel or allowances? Or no, it is. How there, is it going to be used? It'll be used, for instance, to host or sponsor a workshop to educate. Right. those that wish to be educated okay. on any kind of 
thing they can come up with on children's theater or mime or whatever they, they choose to do. Playwriting. Mm -hmm. Playwriting. They hosted that uh, children's theater playwriting contest yeah. in Indianapolis this year. I suppose whatever the executive board of the state organization decides, uh, that's their decision is yes. going to determine how it's used. Yes. Uh -huh. And they receive, I believe, $10,000 a year from the Indiana Arts Commission. Mm -hmm. to um, support their their services. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty tremendous. Brian, when uh, you got all this money from the capital fund drive, or the, uh, what, it, it isn't called a capital fund drive. No, it's a uh, capital campaign. Capital campaign. Capital funds campaign. Well, it's for the uh, refurbishing of the theaters. But even refurbishing is not the word that's used normally. But at any rate, what do you, what do you hope most to get done with that money. Most to get done with that money is different than what I want to get done mostly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I want to uh, ensure the the, uh, the existence of the voice block, which Muncie Civic Theater is housed in, mm -hmm. as well as the theater uh, with that money. And that's what I want to get done most. I want to... Uh, the theater really hasn't been touched in a major way in, since 1961 when Civic Theater moved in there. And so I want it to last another 40 years, or 20, this is 20 years, but I think it can last 40 years in the way that we're going to repair it. In the interior. We're not going to do much structural changes in the auditorium. We will do some structural changes in the lobby. Um, and we own two-thirds of the Boyce Block, which was built in 1880. And so we will... Um, Try to restore that to the best way possible. We're having a heck of a time, heck of a time, awarding bids for the work to done on the outside. Well, I knew you at oh. one time held them off, didn't you? You well, rejected we held, two bids. Yeah, we rejected two bids through the city. The city has awarded us twenty-seven thousand dollars, and since they have done that, they have a say so in what is being done. And we've rejected several bids uh, because the specs weren't right. And I was on the phone today for about two hours with Minneapolis and Kansas City two painting vendors trying to decide what paint we want to go with and what kind of specification each, each paint has, what kind of ramifications and that dollar amounts it'll have by choosing either paint. and, and all. Uh, It's really been a mess. When you think of the exterior, will the present marquee remain? At this time, yes, it will. And I will tell you, since this won't be read for another 50 years, why it will remain. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, when Jack Reichert headed up the... Uh, campaign for the marquee, he asked the same people that are being asked presently to give money. And to, for us to go and say, would you give us a $1,000? Well, what are you going to do with that money? Well, we're going to turn on that marquee you just gave $500 for. Yeah. And we can't do that. I see. And so it will remain. Well, I, I suppose that my own preference would be a, a refurbishing or a rejuvenation of the lobby. Yes, yes. And it will be beautiful. Ed. Because... Uh, the ideas that I've heard expressed about that lobby really make it sound quite exciting. Mm -hmm. A little more open. And and while well, right, removing the wall and exposing the staircase, I think we'll get a feeling of about a 20% growth in space. I think so. Um, without growing any space at all. We have another social area, which will be the, the stairway. Yeah. One thing I would, what I wanted to say was the most, what I'd mo like to get done the most, and we failed to raise the money from one individual to do this. But as I said, we only own two-thirds of the Boyce Block. I like to see us own the entire... 100%. 100% of the Boyce Block. And in there now, in the parts that we don't own, are apartments and a restaurant and a photo shop. I'd like to see those two stay. And then on the second floor where the apartments are, make those into offices. Not only Muncie Civic Theater's management office, but offer rentals at a low rate and I'm saying low at $100 a month, yeah. um, to other arts organizations in town, um, and so that we have a shared office space, shared receptionist, shared volunteer space, shared equipment, and so that we operate, all of us operate more efficiently, more cooperatively mm -hmm. uh, with each other. So that it becomes a place, a home for the Delaware County Council for the Arts. And a home for the Indiana Community Singers mm -hmm. or... Um, any other arts organization that might want to join us. Yeah. Um, but that would also, also offer us a space to build a scene shop, which we badly need. Yes. And that would expose, uh, make us more available for a community center instead of a civic theater. Mm -hmm. And then in the portion that we do own, where we now store 
um, scenery. We moved out to the scene shop and we built a black box studio theater, which could have our shows, which could be Beckett or Sam Shepard or whatever we'd like to do. Maybe even Tobacco Road, and you might get to see <laughs> Tobacco Road produced. Watch your guy. <laughs> but um, uh, with a lounge. And then we can also rent that space out for coffee houses or for an evening of jazz or any of those types of things. And that's really what I want to see happen. And it's not still in, it's still not impossible. Yeah. Uh, with the newly founded Community Foundation and their $2.2 million plus, I think uh, we will go to them in two years and say, here's a project for you to fund. I think you can do it. I think you can. Well, this is Community Theater in Middletown. Ed Strother has been talking with Brian Lau on July 17th, 1985 at 1401 West Ashland, shortly before supper time, of pork chops, green beans, broccoli, applesauce, tomato and cottage cheese. <laughs>